my name is Diana Castro and you've tuned in to Leaders with a Mission. And today I have someone really special, like always. But if you are a multi-passionate human that is looking to, you know, find meaningful purpose, this show today is for you. So let me tell you a little bit about our guest. Her name is Anna Tootle, and she is on a mission to raise the vibration of the planet by a way of mindfulness meditation. Her dream is to awaken people from living by default to living by purpose. She is also using her foodie superpowers to help feed neighbors in need, helping provide over 18,000 meals via her pumpkin cells and her contribution to feeding South Florida. And with you, this beautiful human here, Anita. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here. And, you know, I wanted to start with how you came to find mindfulness meditation, because often people find it in the funniest or most um, interesting ways. And I wonder how did you find your way through this practice? My story is interesting, like everybody's story. I've always been passionate about health and wellness. I became a spinning instructor when I had three little babies, and that was my way of sanity, of getting out of the house and practicing something that was high vibration and something that was healthy. And that was in the early 2000s, in about 2010 or so, after so much research and reading about health and wellness and mindfulness, a, something that kept coming up was meditation, meditation meditation. And I thought, well, who has time for that? And what's the big deal anyway? And I have three kids and I'm working and yeah, one day, one day I'll get to it. Well, push came to shove and I found myself looking inside, needing to look inside for answers at a time in my life. And I thought, well, maybe I should give this a shot, right? Maybe I should look within. And I did. And I did what every beginning meditator does. Because what are the practices of mindfulness if you don't apply them? They're nothing but something ethereal. So what I like to do is bring practice to purpose. And so I was doing everything else except the meditation. And so I did all the what the beginners do. I would fall asleep. I'd say, I'm wasting my time. This is not for me. This is for other people. I have, you know, I have a to-do list that is too long, so I'm not going to do it. But around that time, my daughter started playing volleyball uh, all over the map for travel, travel volleyball. And I would find myself in uh, dark hotel rooms in the morning, nice and early. She didn't have to be on the court for a couple of hours. And I thought, all right, Anna, what's your excuse now? <laughs> you have nowhere to go. The room is nice and dark. Let's, let's have at it. Let's try it. And I did. And according to me, I failed. Again, I'd fall asleep. I'd, my mind would wander. This isn't for me. What is the big deal? But I stuck it out and I stuck it out and I stuck it out. And now uh, I teach about it because it is very simple, but it's really, really powerful. So I liken it to plugging yourself into that inner source. And because we are so glued to our outer technology, that's the way society runs right now. We're glued to our phones all day long. This is a way of tapping into that inner technology. And it turns out that we're a lot wiser, we're a lot more intuitive, and we're a lot smarter than we give ourselves credit for. We're just raised and groomed to think all the answers are outside. And it turns out that a lot of those answers are inside. We just don't give ourselves a chance to listen. And meditation provides that vehicle to do that. That's beautiful. I, I heard you through what you were saying. It's more of like, give yourself permission to fail at it. Like, it's not, it's not going to be the same for everyone. Um, and I, I, when you were saying something in particular, I remember a quote once I read, it was like, when you have a lot of things to do, when you don't have time, meditate for like double the time you were thinking that you should. And it was, it's like, why? <laughs> and I love meditation. I'm, I'm someone who takes time in the morning to meditate. Good for you. Um, I don't do it all the time. Like, Probably I do it like three times a week. Perfect. There's weeks that I get to do every day and that's awesome. Yeah. But it has brought so much peace and so much awareness and so much connection. And it's just, it it grounds me. Like it just, it I feel like it allows me to tap into like an outer intelligence that is like a collective mind. It just, and it just like, it makes everything feel well, Soft. it's the adult version of a timeout. You know how you put a toddler in a timeout? <laughs> yes. This is the adult version of timeout. Yeah. 
time out in that introspection, you know, you're not going to see lightning bolts or fireworks and you're not going to sign a contract the next day or anything like that. But little nuances start to add up. And when I mean nuances, I mean, I tell people, for example, you know, all of a sudden that burning question that you had for months, like, eh, it slides into your experience because you've given yourself a chance to listen. Therein lies the magic. Or that person that used to rub you the wrong way, they would irritate you. You know what? They don't irritate you anymore because you have an elevated perspective. And so when we have an elevated perspective, I think we become a better version of ourselves. And when we become a better version of ourselves, everybody wins. Your partners win, your coworkers win, your neighbors win, your children, your family. Everybody wins. It's like, I always think if they incorporated this in schools, oh my wow, God. what a yes. different world we would live in. And oh, by the way, we'd be kinder humans. Like really, what? <laughs> who's not up for that? The world is thirsty for that. And um, I love that you're mentioning that because I do find it to be true. Like I feel like mindfulness, it it, it is, you mentioned that it's like a, a, a grown up timeout. And to me, I would say it's like a way of like slowing down or like we're so busy and we're always on go, 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 you know, like just moving that having that moment to like give your brain permission to just pause, like, like even computers, we have to unplug them to reboot them, reboot them yeah, so that they can work better. Like our brains need that luxury. Like it's it's like they, our soul, our soul is needs thirsty that. For it, yeah, yeah, for like quietness, for for just like listening and like feeling. For and a we second. live in a very fast paced society. I mean, the world is fast paced, but I think that our society in particular is just it's just everything go, is go, go. go. When do you get a chance to breathe? Correct. So what I try and teach people and tell people is, listen, it's not difficult. You don't you don't necessarily have to separate so much time out, but show up, make it a discipline, mm. set your alarm clock 10, 15, five minutes before you normally wake up. Just set a, set that discipline. And before you know it, you miss it. And I'm sure on the days that you don't, you're like, you know, something is off. It's that moment that you just, you need that peaceful time within. And that's it because, you know, mindfulness has become something that I think in many ways is a fad only because the world is thirsty for it. But you don't want to keep it so ethereal that it's not practical. Yeah. So you have to bring it down, yeah. make it grounded. When you're saying that, like there's there's a part of me that I don't wanna make I don't wanna create a belief that if I don't meditate in the morning, my day goes off. Because I've seen a lot of women say that. And I it feels to me that like you're conditioning your day based on one thing. And I'm like, I refuse to do that. And I also, I guess, to make it a practicality, to make that practical aspect of it, even when I take sometimes meetings with new clients or clients themselves, I ask them to do a breathing exercise with me so that I can slow down. Because I'm like going, going, oh my God, I have to go to this meeting. And I arrive to the meeting and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, what would you mind doing a breathing exercise? Oh, wow. And doing that with them, it's just the energy just is so, Shifts. it's like, we take three deep breaths to kind of like, okay, I'm here, I'm with you. My attention is fully present. And the the way people, you know, like some people might be like, oh, that's a little woo-woo for me. But I've, I haven't, I guess like the people that we attract Correct. is so, they're aware they're of it like, and oh, they're yeah. like, thank you. I really needed to like yeah. pause for a minute Absolutely. before we engage. So I love that. So, but I know that you're a multi-passionate entrepreneur. You're a foodie. Like, you know, you do all these things. You were a mom, like you're now in a different stage. So tell me about how you're teaching people to um, use mindfulness and listen and tap within and incorporate. Because I thought that one of the interesting, interesting things about you is that you incorporate all of your, all of your brilliance, all of your magic into service. And it's, it, you don't have, I don't feel that you choose between one thing or another. You just, you just go. So tell me a little bit about how do you do that? Well, it's funny that you say that because I always think, you know, my, my business is a two-pronged business, right? I have the pumpkin bread that I sell to help feeding South Florida. 
uh, helping our neighbors in need, uh, especially when it comes to access to food is a huge passion of mine. Uh, so the thought of people going hungry devastates me. So I figure this is my way, this is my little grain to add to the community. And the other part is the mindfulness and the meditation. And that one has a very um, applicable applicable component. So the way I teach it is a four-step recipe. Again, I don't want to keep it ethereal. I want to bring it down so that we can practice it. Mm -hmm. So I always say they're very simple, but they're very powerful and you have to show up. That's the key. You have to show up. So some people, you know, think, oh, my life is going to change overnight. No. But again, it's the adding of those little nuances that makes your life so much better. So I have a four-step recipe for mindfulness, and that is meditation every morning, right? Just a few minutes. That's all it takes. If you have time to stand in line at Starbucks and binge on Netflix, you have time for meditation. <laughs> <laughs> People are always like, oh, okay, if you put it that way, yeah. <laughs> Number two, gratitude. Gratitude is huge. Yeah. Gratitude is a huge component because it's not about, oh, you know, there's kids starving in Africa and I should feel, feel grateful about the roof. No, that's not quite it. It's more about raising our frequency and raising our vibration and appreciating all that is working in our lives. So no matter what your day was like, by day's end, right before you go to sleep, I always tell people, go through a little rampage. What went well? You know, you got that great parking spot. You had a lunch that was absolutely delicious. You saw a puppy and you had a great time playing with that puppy in the park and you weren't expecting it. Uh, a little baby smiled at you in the elevator and on and on and on. And those little things do two things. The, the gratitude does two things. It raises your frequency and your vibration. You automatically feel better. You're in a better mood and you magnetically attract more. more you or attract more of what you want. The universe says, okay, coming right up. I've got more. And the reverse is true. I love it. Yes. You know, yes, the reverse yes. is true. Number three is the affirmations. The affirmations are really important because affirmations are the statements that we tell ourselves. And they're not always very empowering. We want to take statements like, I'm not good enough, or I'm not smart enough, or I'm not successful enough. And the subconscious mind is always listening to statements that lift us up. You know, I am enough. You know, life loves me. A life is abundant. And so when you start telling yourself those statements, suddenly you shift and you have to say them in the present moment, not like one day I'll be happy, like I'm really happy right now. And you have to say them uh, with meaning so that you're not robotic and like, oh, life loves me. No, life loves me. You know, like you have to say it with meaning. And number four is the journaling. The journaling is really important. So those four components and journaling provides uh, that safe space of your soul speaking out in a non-judgmental way. You take pen to paper and you just write one page three times a week. Your fourth grade teacher is not going to grade for grammar and spelling and all that <laughs> stuff. You don't have to reread it again. There's you no judgment. There's no judgment. It, it's, it's a space where you just get your sentiments out on paper. And that in and of itself, I think, is very therapeutic. And make it fun. Sit in your coziest chair. Grab your softest blanket. You know, cut out 10 minutes three times a week, grab your cup of tea, whatever, whatever, you know, makes you happy and make it fun. And it's an appointment that you have with yourself. And when you start showing up for those appointments, you start really seeing the difference and people will be like, what are you taking? Like, what, <laughs> you know, what, what kind of pill? There's no pill. The pill is vitamin me, you know, I'm oh investing in me. Vitamin me. Vitamin me. You're just taking these little exercises and applying them and showing up and doing them and then all of a sudden, you know, things start to shift and your perspective, I have, I have a saying that our perspective is navigated or our circumstances are navigated by our perspective. And people often think it's the opposite. I know I used to. So I would let everything around me dictate what was going inside and it's the opposite. Because if you do that, you're at the mercy of circumstances. You're That's always in victim horrible. mode. Yes, yes, yes. It's horrible. Everything so, happens to you. Like the world is, exactly. is happening so to you. So you're at the mercy of anything and everything going around you. Well, first of all, it's disempowering. Second of all, it doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't feel good. So if you turn that and shift it around, your experience is very different. Mm, that's beautiful. And, and it, br it brings a lot of awareness of how we... Um, navigate every day? How do we take the days? How do we allow for days to to happen with us? Um, recently, I was talking to someone and they're like, oh my God, I got paid. And, and then they said, but I have to pay rent. 
and um and like I, I i in one second i saw i saw like woo, like both you know like the highs and the lows exactly. um and it made me really aware of how we perceive things um and I didn't tell him that, but I, I remember thinking to myself, I was like, what a beautiful opportunity that money allows you to have a roof over your shoulder. I didn't, I wanted him to feel comfortable, but it, it made me aware of how we frame how money, how, how we see money or how we see money um, work through our life. Yeah. But, um, and it's about the perspective, what you're saying of how we, how we see the world, how we frame the conversation, how we talk to ourselves. I love the vitamin me. me I'm going to totally me. steal that from you because yeah, that's steal gorgeous. It, steal it, yeah. um, I'm taking vitamin me. I'm taking vitamin me. I'm <laughs> investing in me. You have to know that you are worthy enough of that time. Yes. Mindfulness is an act of self-love. I am worthy of taking this time. You know, it's, it's like at this point, I'll journal in the middle of my living room and there's chaos going on and I just block it out. Yeah, and they know, my family knows, don't, you know, they're not going to talk to me, but I just block it. This is, this is my time. And I'll write on the paper, whatever wants to come up, you know, whatever comes up. So it's an act of self-love. And another thing that keeps showing up in what you're saying is to show up. You oh, keep you saying, show, show up. up. You've got to show up. It's, it's, it's the, the key of consistency, even if it doesn't feel like it's working, even if you think you don't have time. One of my coaches says that when we say that we don't have time, we are avoiding responsibility. And that was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, wow. Like, how are we prioritizing? You have to make that time for yourself. Yeah. Well, it's the same. Uh, it's, it's like the example when I started meditating and I thought, oh, gosh, you know, what am I doing? Am I wasting my time? And what's the big deal? And so on and so on. And I would fall asleep and my mind would race. They say you're not supposed to think. Well, how is that possible? The fact that I'm thinking is thinking, isn't it? Like, you know, I would go back but and you forth. Would go and, and you, you observe your mind. <laughs> but that in itself is meditation. Like it I is. found it that like even finding your brain going, hey, but you have this meeting is like, to me, at least the way that I've learned is more of like, Oh, thank you for the reminder. We're, you know, we're going back to white. Kind of like, we're, yeah. thank you. Like the chalkboard that is erased. Yeah, it's just more of like, nice, okay. But it's like training your mind as like a little child that it's like, mom, are we there yet? And it's like, yeah, it's okay. We're getting there. Yeah, and, and at some point the brain goes, fine, I'll just sit down and I'll wait for the 10 minutes. And then when you're done, you let me know. But it's that training of what, what, I used to say Is my monkey pause? mind. Yeah, exactly. Like, hello, hello, reminder here. You yeah. have an appointment in 10 minutes. And, and that's the like, one that wants to tell you all the things that you have to do that day to say, okay, it can wait. It can wait. Right now we're sitting down and we're listening to this. And right now this is what exactly. we're doing. And, and, exactly. And it seems to be easy, but it, 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 it takes practice. It takes practice. It takes practice. And, you know, when I started, it wasn't a natural. I was not a natural. You know, I'm very left brain comfortable. So the whole logical component was like, you know, saying what's going on. You're wasting your time. You have things to do, et cetera, et cetera. And then the left brain was like, uh-uh, I'm taking over. And so what was it for you that, um, when did you surrender? What, like, what did you have like a, have well, you had like a really exper experiential meditation that you're like, I must take that one again. Like what happened here? Was there anything that you like that transformed that into, oh, there's something here. So the, the left brain comfortable Anna, it couldn't deny all the research that had come out about lowering blood pressure, lowering cholesterol and increasing happiness, increasing joy and better health and on and on and on. I said, okay, there's gotta be something to this. And there was. And so I started realizing that I was accessing a wisdom that I had shut down for so long. I had just shut her out. I just was too busy. You know, I was raising three kids, I was busy. And then I said, no, we're gonna listen. We're going to listen. So there wasn't one particular meditation per se, but I just start seeing the stacking up of those little nuances. My perspective started to change and a, I opened up a doorway for intuition. And in opening that intuition, I started getting what I call like downloads 
of inspiration. And so I always have pen and paper nearby me. I'm like the sticky note queen. I have sticky notes everywhere and I have notebooks everywhere. I'm the happiest nerd with my notebooks because I get downloads and I get, and maybe this is when I realized, oh my gosh, I'm getting all this information. I need to share it. You know, I need to share it. And I started in 2015, a notebook called like Angel Whispers because I just, I had to write down everything that was coming through. And I thought, this isn't just for me. Yes, it's helpful for me, but this isn't meant to be kept. This is meant to be shared. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I started teaching the classes. And uh, as a matter of fact, in 2016 in a meditation is when I got that hit, start making these breads, donating a portion of the sale, you're going to be happy. And here I am. And it fills my heart knowing that we've raised so much money for meals so that people have food on their table and in their refrigerator. You know, that makes me happy. And so if everybody follows their happy place, oh my gosh, don't we all benefit? Like, yes. it's, it's a no brainer. So let me ask you this question. Yes. What is your personal definition of leadership? My personal definition of leadership is somebody who stands in their own truth and somebody who's aligned with themselves. Mm -hmm. And that for me is, Alignment means I have my dreams and desires and I have my gifts and talents and they've merged together so I can stand in my own truth and I can be a beacon of light for other people. That's the way I see leadership. That's beautiful. And is there any books that you think, oh my God, everyone and like everyone should have a little piece of this little heaven? What would that be? So two books come to mind and that is Worthy, Worthy by Nancy, I just blanked out on her name. Nancy, hello. Nancy. It's okay, we'll find it. Levinson, Le Nancy Levinson, okay. Hay House author. Okay. Worthy, what an amazing book. Mm -hmm. What an amazing book. And the other one would be Dying to Be Me by Anita Morjani. Amazing, mm -hmm. Dying to Be Me. It just has that, that um, raised perspective on why we're here and why things happen to us. And wow, I would read that one over and over again. Well, I've read it and then heard the audio because it's like, you can't get enough. Maybe anything in the Abraham Hicks series is amazing too. Okay. So those three come to mind. And a little birdie, or I don't know how I found out that you're doing your own book. Well, I have one on my radar. <laughs> <laughs> I have a book on my radar, but I have so much material and so much content floating around that the left brain Anna needs a little structure so I can put it in a pretty package and deliver. <laughs> so yeah, I, I definitely feel that speaking and that writing that communication wants to come out because of... Can you give us a little bit, like, a little pre, like, what is it about? Like, I would say that it's along the lines of, and this is, again, this I'm not reinventing the wheel here. It's listening to that inner tuition, that inner gut. Recently, for an interview with Voyage Magazine, I was asked to, you know, I answered some questions and I realized that... I had been fighting these two, not fighting, but separating these two areas of my business when really I could be putting them together and then somebody else, uh, Dion Dean, I'm sure you know Dion, um, she was like, no, they, they are very relatable. And I thought, they are? Oh my gosh, because I'm not seeing it. <laughs> and she goes, yeah, they're very relatable. They have a lot to do with mindfulness and um, that mindful component, even though they're a little bit different, but you can wrap them so what I'm trying they? to wrap them together in a pretty package so that I can write about it and tell people, listen, listen to that inner voice because it never lies. It never, ever lies to you. Follow it. And so I've decided, you know what? No more fighting. I'm going to listen to it and not judge myself because we are the biggest, you know, we judge ourselves the harshest. Mm -hmm. At least I know I have. And it's, it's futile. It doesn't, it serves no purpose. Yeah. It's what are those no two things you have me at? Like No, no, no. The two things are the two arms of my business, the pumpkin bread to help feeding South Florida, oh, okay. and then the mindfulness and meditation courses. Yeah. So I always think, oh my gosh, they're two, you know, completely separate, but they do have... They're in service. They're, they're in service. Of humanity. But I I'm trying to find that pretty ribbon to wrap around them both. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, soon enough, I'll be writing a book. I feel, I feel like I'm headed that way. And in that moment... In this moment, I've decided, you know what? I'm a work in progress and that's okay. I don't have all the answers and that's okay. I love it. Yeah. 
Thank you, Anita. Where can people find more of you? Where can people get um, a little bit more of your magic, of your love, of your pumpkin bread? Like, where can we get more of you? Anna Toodle is my handle. Uh, Anna with one N and T-O-O-T-L-E on Instagram is the easiest and quickest way. I sell the pumpkin bread at the Key Biscayne Farmer's Market every Saturday. Uh, it's a beautiful little market in the middle of paradise. And the Sunrise Gratitude, the meditation and mindfulness classes are Friday mornings at the Key Biscayne Beach Park. And um, I put it all on Instagram. And that feeds into Facebook and to LinkedIn. And recently I was asked to become, uh, to step into president of the board for Fem City Miami. And that was a natural segue too because of the community component. So I think if there's something that we've learned from the pandemic is that we really, community is much more important than we ever thought. I mean, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so, much so much for much. having me. Thank you for your service, for your mission, for your love and passion for people to connect with with their inner truth and to tap into their inner, inner wisdom for more connectedness, for like to connect all of the multi-passionate parts of us that we feel they're separate, but ultimately they are one and and they create our reality. So thank you so no, thank much. Thank you. Thank you. I think when we honor that, everybody wins. Yes. I mean, look what you're doing. I mean, and here I am winning. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. And for those of you who are home and who want to use the power of video to amplify your visibility and create more goodness in the world, we're going to ask you to visit us at fourproductions.com and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.